The technology has changed in very, very fundamental ways many things about human culture at a level that has never happened before in the history of the human race. I wish I could report that the wonderful onward march of technology had done the same for science itself. Let me explain what I mean. What happens is that certain scientific things were invented, discovered, put forward, down through history, they became accepted, and then they got to be what was known, and the field went on. And there's nowhere where that phenomena is more evident than in our understanding of physical law. So while our technology has taken what understanding we have of physical law and gone gangbusters with it in the information technology which Gordon was talking about but also in the biotech that you heard about today, we don't see that remarkable advance in what we teach our high school students, what we teach our undergraduate students. You, of course, all know that the Earth used to be the center of the universe and everything revolved about it. We don't think that anymore. And you knew there were four elements in the periodic table, didn't you? Earth, air, fire, and water. Everybody knows that. And phlogiston, thank you, that's a good one. Yeah, fire used to be phlogiston. That was a separate thing. And we laugh. They're ludicrous. But you know, if you go back and read what those people were talking about, they weren't stupid people. They were very smart people. They were just stuck in a way of thinking. And that was only a few hundred years ago. So let me ask you, what do you think people would be laughing about a hundred years from now that we're teaching our kids today? We had started out having a physical picture of the electron as a wave propagating around the proton. And that's why it had discrete energy levels that all made perfect sense intuitively. But then you got some fancy mathematics that made it unnecessary to have the physical picture. And then Bohr argued that we're above all that now. We don't need physical pictures. We don't need to use intuition. In fact, only people that are a lower form of life would use any physical reasoning like that. And we're above that. We just use mathematics. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with mathematics. But what got propagated was the notion that mathematics had become the guide to physical theory. Now, what that, you know, a lot of you know a lot about mathematics. I don't have to tell you about that. But one of the things that I've developed down through my life is an enormous respect for the power of mathematics. I know a lot of mathematicians. They're very bright. And one of the things I've come to realize is that you can, if you're good enough, develop a mathematics for any physical theory, whether it's what nature does or not. So in fact, if you say that mathematics is going to guide what physics does, all you're saying is that you've let go of the fact that the, what the real world does should be guiding what your physics is. Because the mathematics can express anything. 
Well, that's where we are today. Mathematics took over, and we now have essentially all of our physics taught with increasingly sophisticated mathematics and less and less physical insight. And that happened since the late 1920s. Meanwhile, there have been fantastic, amazing experimental results. The technology that we work with today is a result of a bunch of people not doing mathematics but doing experiments and figuring out how nature really works and putting it to work doing electronics and optics and biology and all kinds of marvelous things. So I ask myself the question, if we knew what we know today, experimentally, how nature works, would we teach our youngsters about physics the way we teach them? And I think we absolutely would not.